The first new feature of Insta360 Studio 5.0 is that you now have the ability to edit multiple clips. So if you open it up and import your footage, instead of using this media tab here, what we're going to do is head over to project. And here is where you'll find a brand new feature of the software dedicated to fully editing your videos from start to finish, at least the basics anyway. So I'll hit new project and give it a name. And here, drum roll, we have a timeline here at the bottom. So if I import my first clip by clicking the plus icon and then a second clip by again, by pressing the yellow plus icon, <gasps> We have two clips on the same timeline. It's taken them about six years to add this, so better late than never. This means you can do your entire video edit right here in Insta360 Studio without having to go to a separate editor. And you wanna know something even cooler than that is that Insta360 Studio now is not limited to just Insta360 cameras. In fact, you can import any 360 footage and you can import regular footage that wasn't even shot with the 360 camera. Here's proof, I've just imported my last YouTube video here. I can add that to the timeline. And this was shot on my Sony camera, not an Insta360 camera. And I'm able to edit it right here amongst my 360 footage. I took these shots when I was on holiday in Perth, which is on the very far side of Australia. And I shot them all with my Insta360 X3, which I'll link below. However, again, you can use any 360 camera including any future 360 cameras that may come out. And one thing I love about Insta360 Studio 5.0 is the bigger and better viewer. When I click and drag, this is so much smoother and more responsive than it has been previously. And you can tell the refresh rate is really good. It's basically lifelike. Whereas viewing clips here on the media page, it's always been a bit jerkier. You can see the lagging as you move around your 360 video. Whereas this new project window is so much better. The next new feature is autosave. So as you can see up here at the top left, Insta360 Studio will save your project on a regular basis in the background so you don't have to worry about hitting Control or Command S. In fact, it does it every single time you do something. So if I were to trim this clip here, you'll see up the top, autosave has updated. So anytime you make any step within the program, autosave's got your back. Another great editing feature they've added that makes it feel more like an actual editor is shortcuts. So up the top right, if you click on this icon here, up will come a page filled with editing shortcuts. And while you'll probably find that you won't be using a lot of these shortcuts, some of them are the traditional editing shortcuts that you would traditionally use in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve and CapCut, such as Trim End and Trim Start, AKA Ripple Trim. So if I were to go to this point on the timeline and hit Q, I just trimmed everything to the left of the playhead. Likewise, if I head to the end and press W, you there goes everything to the right. So if you do plan on doing the majority of your editing right here in Insta360 Studio, you will wanna familiarize yourself with these shortcuts since they will absolutely speed up your editing time. By the way, if you want to know exactly how I shoot 360 videos and reframe them to a high standard, you can find my entire workflow from start to finish inside my 360 Video 101 course, where I talk about the best settings you can use in every type of situation imaginable and how to get the best results with your 360 videos. If you want to learn more, I'll link it below. Now the main functions of Insta360 Studio are pretty similar to before. Adding a keyframe is just literally clicking add keyframe and reframing your shots is as simple as moving around the viewer. Then add a keyframe to save the perspective. Something they've added though to make your video flow that extra bit better is transitions. So if we head up here to transitions at the top, here you'll find a library of transition presets. If you're working with 360 footage like I am here, I'd recommend choosing three 60 because these ones are more tailored to 360 videos. So if I drag and drop this one onto the timeline, let's watch it back. Not bad at all. And likewise, you can choose any transition from this transitions menu, click and drag it. And then if you zoom in, you can then grab the handles on the outside edge of the transition to make it longer. Let's see how this looks. 
Not bad at all. The next feature they've added to Insta360 Studio is titles. So if you choose text up the top, here you'll find a whole library of text presets that you can add to your video. Right now, the library is a bit limited, but there are a few good options here. If you wanna add one, just click the yellow plus, and here you can see it on the text layer of the timeline that is now created, which you can extend to cover your entire clip or just a portion of it. And then with it selected as well, you can head up to the top right and edit the text and then move it around by clicking and dragging. Right now, there's no option to change color of your text, just the size, position, and rotation. And most of these titles are white, therefore I'd recommend using them over darker areas of your shots. The next new feature of Insta360 Studio is music, yes. You can add music to your edits finally. Up here, you'll find a whole library of tracks that Insta360 provides, which you can use for personal use on your social media channels. And some of these are okay. However, if you're a member of another platform that offers royalty-free music, I would also suggest considering this. For me, I like using Epidemic Sound. So all you would need to do is drag and drop it here onto the timeline. And you can see my music track has been added to the music layer, which you can then move around, adjust the volume and fade up the top right, and also adjust the length of. If you zoom out really far, just grab the handle at the end and slide it cross and we have ourselves some music. In this first incarnation of a more total video editor from Insta360, at the moment there's only one video track and one audio track so you couldn't have b-roll on top of something else. However, I'm sure they'll add multiple tracks with a future update. Also, I don't think this is necessarily an editor that you would do complex edits in. It's more for the basics. If you want to edit together a vlog, you do it here on one track. The next awesome feature they've added is if you head up to image and then go down to motion nd and toggle that on what this does is it simulates motion blur so as you can see here on the left and right the background is blurry whereas if i turn it off you'll see it's sharp turn it on and it's blurry again and this is just another little tool to make your shots look and feel more exciting the difference between motion nd and a hyperlapse with motion blur is motion nd is for footage played at the normal speed where you don't necessarily want to speed up your clip you just want to add a sense of dynamicism dynamicness i don't know what the word is so that's a really good way to add that motion blur effect which is a really nice cinematic effect and a great addition for any kind of moving shot. The final new feature they've added to Insta360 Studio 5.0 that I want to talk about is if you click on a clip and head over to speed, which is represented by the lightning bolt above the timeline, there's now a lot more options for customizing fast and slow motion. So not only will you find your slow options where you can go from 0.125 times speed to 0.5 times speed, as well as fast two times to 64 times, but you can also customize it here. There's a custom speed option. If you click that, let's say you have a gap that you need to fill and the gap is only 5.4 seconds, yet you want to include your entire clip in it. What you would do is just type it in. There we go, 5.4, and it's calculated that this needs to be at 3.636 times speed. So if I click OK, now I've perfectly customized the speed to fit in the allocated time I asked it to, which is a great option for editing to music or just keeping your edits punchy in general. Look at me go, yeah. Everything else about the new look of Insta360 Studio, you'll be able to pick up pretty easily. All the reframing is done by just clicking and dragging. And wow, that motion ND effect looks super cool when reframing. And up here as well, you'll find the manual controls for reframing. So if you wanted to just do it one degree at a time, you could. However, personally, I find dragging the viewer and using my mouse wheel to zoom in and out to be much more intuitive. So there you have it. There are 10 new features that I'm really excited excited about with the brand new Insta360 Studio release. Big thanks goes out to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. And I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the new Insta360 Studio? Is it a step in the right direction? Is it what you were hoping for? I know a lot of us were hoping for the shot lab effects, which unfortunately weren't added to this release. However, you never know, they may very well come in the next few updates. And speaking of the shot lab effects, if you own an Insta360 camera, but aren't using these 10 effects, you're missing out. So check out this video here to get my top 10 Insta360 shot lab effects that you can easily shoot and edit in under five minutes.